So taking a look at the map, it's going to look uh, basically exactly the same as you would expect if you're, you know, a veteran or even a beginner to EU4. Everything looks exactly the same. It's when we were to click on a nation and then uh, take a look at their diplomat mode that you're going to see things are going to look a little bit different. They have cores on every province that they border. And this is every nation. Every nation in the world owns cores on every province that they border. And the best part about it is that it gets re-upped every year. Every year, they get a claim on every province that they border. So if, for example, we see Austria take some land from Bohemia, the next year they get more cores on Bohemia. I think that this is going to create some very interesting borders, and I think you guys would agree. If you do, make sure you leave a like. I really do appreciate that. Subscribe if you haven't already as well. Lots of videos to come. But by now, I'm sure you guys know the drill. We're going to figure it out by turning it on up to speed five and unpausing. Yeah, not even a year in, and Novgorod has declared a reconquest of Narva over here. Uh, against the Livonian Order, who I think just joined them one way. One. No, no, Volgas joined them. So there you go. Scotland going to war for uh, their reconquest over here of Ulster. Uh, but meanwhile, England also going for the reconquest of Ulster. Scotland is in charge of the siege, so they'll win this one, which means they're going to get cores on uh, more stuff over here in Ireland. So maybe we'll see a little bit of competition on the Isles. That would be great. Some Mamlekian reconquests over here in Aljaf, as well as Beha. And I assume that they're going to annex both of those. Lithuanian reconquest of Odoyev. Meanwhile, Muscovy just annexed Ryzan. France doing some reconquest, uh, but it looks like they may have actually bitten off a bit more than they can chew, outnumbered quite heavily uh, by their friends over here in Burgundy and their subjects. So yeah, safe to say we're seeing quite a bit of shenanigans early on. <laughs> also, shout out Farce. <laughs> purple farce now i i assume that's from the wad if so good touch big fan auto doing as auto does annexing uh some nations around them so far got some bohemian reconquest over here this is definitely going to screw up the hre because uh they're going to be a lot of little nations that are going to get annexed and cores are you know very cheap to reconquest in terms of aggressive expansion which tends to be what limits people when they're playing in the hre yeah, and Bohemia doesn't seem to be slowing down. Looks like they're probably going to annex this province as well. So Bohemia got to be pretty strong. That'd be nice to see. Oh, and just a little bit to the south here. We've got the Hungarian reconquest over here. Yeah, looks like the Serbs getting beat up on yet again. Honestly, this is just total nonstop action. Like, what's going on over here, man? Two wars going on. Uh, yeah, this is just... I feel like we're going to see some pretty serious border changes, and we're not even 10 years in yet. Well, this might be a... Uh, a record we've got the empire of china not doing well lots of rebels going on not even 10 years in to the start date so we'll see how ming does with this and with all this low development land down here it definitely seems that the mams are taking advantage of the cores that they're getting in arabia and down in nubia meanwhile up here yep you hate to see it i'm used to croatia having long borders along the coast but uh, it looks like venice is croatia croatia if that makes sense Meanwhile, France has annexed some land from these guys over here in Provence, as has Burgundy by the looks of it, and Brittany. So Provence just caught hands. Somehow Granada got more land down in Iberia. Not sure what happened there. Yeah, I can't even keep track. Like Novgorod getting full occupied. England is actually over here getting Ireland. And there's just so many occupation lines going on over in just Europe in general. It's very chaotic. <laughs> Shout out Munster snaking every direction. Big fan of this. And it looks like France has once again attacked the Britons or Bretons, Breton. I don't know how you even, what do you call somebody from Brittany? A Breton? A Breton, I believe is actually what they're called, at least in English. Uh, either way, uh, they're going to be this time beating up quite hard on uh, on the, Bur uh, the Burgundians. So lots of B sounds over here. Meanwhile, Otto at the same time just annexed Caraman or at least most of them and uh, Marching down the Levant. We'll see how things go with that. At the same time, Timmy not feeling so hot. Lost lots of land to lots of vassals. Ming has lost quite a bit of land over here to Oirat. So uh, yeah, that's not good. Ayutthaya just declared war on them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ming is definitely not going to come out of this one on the other side. Zero mandate and uh, it ain't going up. Oh, Lord, what is going on over here? Uh, we have Castile annexing Portugal and uh, what looks like to be Morocco going to annex at least down here, but uh, very funny if they take some land over here. France took a nice chunk out of Burgundy over here and Burgundy taking this fort over here. So uh, yeah, they're they're not seeing, they're not looking too good. Brandenburg pushing a bit to the north and uh, Danzig pushing a bit to the east. Novgorod, 
uh, seen better days. After pushing over into Estonia and Livonia, whatever you want to call this area, the Balkan Baltic region, Balkan Baltic, same thing. Uh, Muscovy went in and annexed a bunch, and then Sweden took the rest. So rip those guys. Over in India, it looks like Mewar never changes, beating up on Sindh and annexing a ton of land over here. The cores are definitely giving them a lot of expansion opportunities because the AE is very reasonable. And Bengal, meanwhile, is pushed up all the way into Tibet. So shout out Bengal doing well. Otto is definitely having a game, eating a ton of land over here in the Levant. Uh, they're going to have at least some more cores here soon. And it doesn't look like QQ is fending off those guys well at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's... <laughs> oh, there's quite a lot of consolidation going on, like I said. It's not even 1500 yet. It's like 1490. Austria has annexed like most of Southern Germany. Bohemia has annexed most of Central Germany. And Northern Germany is still a mess with uh, like six or seven different tags kind of vying for that. Castile is pushing down south. Probably going to annex most of Morocco. Venice in the north, Florence in the central, uh, as well as Austria, apparently. And, uh, you know, just the Ottomans down here. <laughs> and apparently Castile and Capitanata, because why not get in on that uh, feeding frenzy, if you will. And yeah, the Ottomans just seem to be going everywhere else, except for Naj, for some reason, with land over here and then over here. <laughs> Though I do have to say I'm a big fan of long Lithuania <laughs> all the way from sea to sea. Just, you know, not quite the seas that you might expect. Muscovy doing their thing, eating up Chagatai at the moment, with Oinrot looking like they're collapsing, losing some wars over here to Haichi, as well as Rebels. Ming collapsing mostly to Ayutthaya and Daiviet in the south, and Oinrot in the north. And then Korea getting in on that action as well. It looks like Oda has annexed Tokyo, or Kyoto rather, and uh, is probably the Shogun. They are indeed the Shogun. Oda, very cool. One of my favorite tags, one of the best colors in the game, in my opinion. Ethiopia is pretty uncontested over here in the horn, and uh, Mewar seems to be the dominant power over here in India, which I am a big fan of, because as you guys know, Mewar never changes. Though I am sad to see Bengal be a one province miner over here. I do think this is the Bengal Delta, right? This is the Bengal River, I, I think. No, this is the Bengal Delta. Man, I really need to brush up on my, uh, you know, Indian subcontinent geography. Apologies, friends. Sub-Saharan Africa is a little messy. Timbuktu snaking Jene. And we've got some colonizers getting in on the action. Cape Verde has gone to the Castilians, and we don't have anybody over in the New World just yet. Though I'm sure we'll see it before too long. No Reformation yet either as of 1491. So we'll keep our eyes peeled for that. And almost 50 years in, the Ottomans have broken that 1,000 development mark with Castile behind them with 772. France with over 700. Austria, pretty competitive with France. Poland in their personal union of Lithuania. They're in the fifth spot. Venice, actually in the sixth, which is pretty cool. Ming starts with like 12, I think, down to eight. So they've lost almost 400 or over 400 development. And then Muscovy. So the top eight is uh, very competitive outside of the Ottoman. So I'm really happy to see that. So it's been about 100 years and uh, Lithuania looks a little different, mostly getting gobbled up by the Ottomans. Poland looks about the same, but um, Austria seems to be quite aggressive quite aggressive the mams are gone reduced to atoms meanwhile persia has formed meanwhile maywar is getting dumpstered by what looks to be a vj delhi with um you know basically most of the land west or east of delhi rather than west uh maywar getting dumpstered so that's kind of sad to see i'm always a big fan of maywar doing well but looking over here you may see oh wow that's a weird looking ming oh it's, it's actually dive yet so <laughs> there you go manchu formed oda formed japan and has pushed up into Manchuria, and meanwhile, Russia, of course, has pushed all the way over to uh, the Bering Sea almost. Denmark has uh, integrated their subjects, if you can believe that, but it looks like they're not doing so well with their capital being occupied by Bohemia, who has also been mostly pushed out of Bohemia by Austria. And of course, you can't forget the big bad France in the room with lots of lands over in the lowlands, all of France outside of Gascony, and a ton of development over here in northern Italy. Um, and then, of course, Spain, their main challenger next to Austria, is doing quite well over here with the entire Iberian Peninsula, most of uh, the Maghreb, and then all the land down here with a little bit going to the French. Ethiopia hanging on, uh, but yeah, with this Ottomans, not for long, I imagine. The Spanish are colonizing a bit down under, lots of islands being colonized as well, mostly by the English. It does look like South America is pretty messy with the Spanish and the English splitting it. Uh, it looks like they're at war currently. We even got the Spanish over here on the left coast, and it's not even 1600 yet, so good on them. We've got Vinland up here from the Danes, but that's occupied by the French, because uh, New Flanders, or whatever over here on the east coast, 
going to the French, Louisiana going to the Scots, if you can believe that, the Spanish getting the West Indies, and then Mexico going mostly to the English. And with absolutism right around the corner, Spain has definitely taken off the colonial game as well as just, you know, free cores on lots of land with decent development. Definitely will do that to you. France actually 700 some development behind them, which is, whew, that's pretty solid. Spain definitely has the lead. Austria with almost 2000 neck and neck with France, which is actually really cool to see. The Ottomans, once they embrace institution, will be the number two great power. England with a 1300, and that includes their colonial development. So they're not powerful. Uh, Poland with mostly the subjects or a lot of subjects development, basically one to one almost. They're in the sixth spot. Russia in the seventh spot, and then Denmark in the eighth. A uh, bit of a power discrepancy between the bottom and the top, but uh, pretty cool to see. And plenty, plenty, plenty more cores for these nations to pursue. Lots of them. Oh, well, it looks like the Ottomans ain't feeling so good. They've definitely shrunk quite a bit and uh, spit out a couple of nations that didn't exist before. And um, yeah, they're currently basically full occupied. <laughs> Persia has definitely surged in this uh, kind of collapse of the Ottomans, which is really cool to see. And Delhi, oh my gosh, that Delhi. Almost as impressive as um, <laughs> Vietnam conquering all of China, Mongolia pushing well up into like Siberia. I am just such a big fan of this in like every way, shape and form. Haven't really been down in Southeast Asia much, but uh, the Majapahit Empire actually doing really well, taking lots of land over in Brunei. All of Java, a bunch of the islands over here in the Spice Islands, very cool. Australia and uh, NZ are both fully colonized by the Spanish. In South America, very yellow with English Brazil. Uh, it looks like the Spanish ended up taking most of England's possessions over here. We have a fr fr French United States, as well as Canada, which makes much more sense to me. And then it's just the rest of uh, North America is Spanish, so pretty boring, <laughs> admittedly, but you know, we'll take what we can get. The borders between France and Spain remain mostly the same, though I think uh, Austria-Hungary has taken a decent chunk of land over here. They definitely have taken land over here in central Italy, uh, and Bohemia is just still hanging out over here. They've even pushed a bit over into Scandinavia, which obviously was clearly Denmark before, and uh, is now French and Austro-Hungarian, apparently. And then Finland has some Poles over here, so there you go. Yeah, clearly Russia has seen better days. Uh, I don't actually know where their capital is, but um, yeah, they're, they're not looking so hot. But obviously the Ottomans are going through decadence. That's, uh, you know, basically if you see the Ottomans getting crushed like this, it's probably decadence. Though very funny to see Greece popping out in these islands, including Cyprus. Always a fan of like little releasable nations like that. In fact, there's a couple of them. Zungar isn't present 1444. Fergana isn't 1444. Iraq isn't 1444. Kiva, not 1444, so we're seeing a ton of these releasables. Ostrakhan over here, also not 1444. Kasim, again, a releasable, though it'd be really cool to see that Buddhist horde over here. Always a fan of seeing them, but uh, nothing yet. Oh, and shout out Sicily, that's uh, popped out over here in Calabria. Very cool. Uh, looks like the Ottomans are about to lose their foothold <laughs> on Italy. And so with a little over 100 years left in the game, Spain is uh, very well out in front in front of Austria, Hungary, who's actually doing incredibly well in their own right. France, dive yet. Let me just repeat that. Dive yet, the number four great power in the world ahead of the Ottomans, only, you know, because the Ottomans have an embraced institution, but Delhi, England, and then VJ, the second Indian nation in the top eight great powers. Love to see that representation. And also very funny and worth mentioning, since they have so many cores, they have a lot of uncontested cores, which is a vanilla mechanic that makes you lose prestige whenever you have cores that you don't own. Uh, so basically every nation in the world has really bad prestige <laughs> and the only reason they get it is like from winning battles and wars and stuff so like super super funny to see that oh my god <laughs> yeah ottomans are definitely not doing well well lads i don't um i don't really see an ottomans on the map anymore except for like up here i don't really know where their capital is uh here it is occupied by rebels all right man shout out nubia on the map very cool to see uh and shout out like all of this massive blobbing nations. Very, very funny to see Lithuania doing well, while uh, Poland is a one province minor over here in like the Carpathian Mountains. <laughs> of course, we've got Germany, who is revolutionary. France, who is revolutionary. Spain, who is revolutionary. So yes, very strong revolution. Shoot, even Fulo and Jolov joined in on the fun. Why not, man? Even little Kong over here, a one province minor who I think starts like over here in 1444. Revolutionary, so yes, very strong revolution. 
The best part about Germany is that before they formed Germany, this was obviously Austria-Hungary, um, they formed the Hanseatic League <laughs> and then formed Germany. So it, um, it was a good ride. It was definitely a good ride. Russia had a bit of a comeback, I'd say. After the Ottomans crumbled, Russia managed to take back quite a bit of their land. Chagatai formed, which is cool. Delhi and VJ looking, you know, north-south here, basically like the the parallel right there. And um, and then there's this. Whatever whatever this is, this is this is what we get. So shout out Tang, one province miner here in central China. Holding still. Doesn't want to get noticed. Doesn't want to get annexed. But yeah, how about that dive yet? <laughs> That's a good look. Never heard of this tag before. Looks like they popped out of Borneo over here from the Majapahit Empire, who still remains like relevant, I would say, at least regionally relevant in 1821. South America is exclusively Spanish and Cuba joins the United States as independent nations. The rest are all still colonial subjects with the Spanish over here, even some English Mexico hanging in there. A couple of English provinces over in the Louisiana region. And then the US decided to annex Canada, like from fallout or something. So they're both French culture. Oh, still freaks me out to say that. Shout out an independent Iceland. Always happy to see that. And interestingly enough, we don't really have a Reformation. We have Anglican and Protestant. And that's like, that's really it. It's all just Catholic. Still some Coptic remnants down here. If we're looking at Christians uh, from the uh, the Ethiopians, a couple of provinces over here. And then the rest is like Catholic as well, which is pretty funny. I mean, Spain went through and converted a ton of land down here. Orthodox still going strong, but uh, not quite like uh, this beautiful, beautiful, rare, semi-rare Buddhist religion here, which is exclusive to uh, Diviet, I think, in 1444. So very cool to see. Also cool to see the Shia on the rise. Looks like uh, Shia would actually be the primary Islamic kind of religion in the world in a, this timeline, which is pretty sick. We definitely have some Prussian culture over here. So it looks like we had a Prussia form and then it got split. I'm not sure. The Franks pushed the Genoese out of Genoa. Interesting to see Muscovite down here. Um, not really sure what that's all about. Obviously, this stuff makes more sense. But uh, how about this Kalka culture, which is it's like a Mongol culture, I think. Sino-Vietnamese over here. So the Chinese culture group is looking very formidable, like up there with, um, with the Levantine group. Actually, probably even bigger, if I had to guess. New World is mostly Platinian with some English down in the south. And then American over here exclusively in Mexico and then like the Louisiana, I guess. And then the rest is French, Louisianian, lots of Danes up here in Canada, though, which is pretty cool. And then I guess just Mexican is the rest. It's all just Mexican. Very funny to see the majority of Mexican culture outside of modern Mexico. I'm always a big fan of that. Oh, and, you know, Cuba, the <laughs> Caribbean nation is all Mexican. We finished the game with Germany out the number one great power, even beating out Diviet because obviously Europe is overpowered. Diviet finishes number two, very respectable, with Spain and France, the revolutionary nations in the third and fourth spot, neck and neck for development. VJ in the fifth, Persia in the sixth, huge drop off in development though. You can see the US in seventh spot with Delhi in the eighth, under 2000 development. Meanwhile, we have a fully stacked, very spooky economic hegemon for revolutionary Germany, very nice. And still, all these years later, prestige is an issue. Losing five a year, actually. So, yeah, prestige is definitely kind of the major thing that caused the issues, but I guess it's not really that big of a deal if everybody is playing on an equal playing field because everybody is losing prestige, right? Kind of makes sense. Either way, that was a really fun one. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, leave a comment down below if you've got a mod in mind that you'd like me to showcase here on the channel. I appreciate you making it all the way to the end of the video. If you want to support me, my Patreon is linked in the description below, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.